there goes my Bond Tech gears. Oh God. Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. We're in my basement. Uh, we're here with the Prusa i3 MK or Mark III S with the MMU 2S multi-material unit. Uh, this was originally a, just a regular Mark III and then I've, I bought the MMU uh, 2S with the upgraded extruder package with the IR sensor that is from hell. Sorry, I mean heck, it's from heck. Um, <laughs> but uh, just the calibration procedure that it told me to do didn't end up calibrating it properly and I ended up having to shift the whole thing over, but we'll see that in a moment. What I'd like to do, unlike a lot of videos out there, instead of saying, here's my problem, how do I fix it? I want to say, here's how it runs correctly, and here's what happens if you mess up this sensor. Here's what happens if you keep the filament from feeding properly. And then if those situations happen, um, what you do to rectify that, right? So there's some, there's some, some issues that happen some uh, complications that arise because these sensors go bad or it has a feeding jam or something like that um, that end up manifesting you know potentially two layers uh, or two shifts later on um, just due to the fact that this only has one extruder um, or sorry this only has one bond tech drive gear and then a ball bearing on the other side and this has two bond tech gears um, yeah that's the basic premise of this video hopefully you're gonna enjoy it and you'll get something out of it if you do please subscribe share um, I'd appreciate it if if you thought it was terrible downvote it you know scathe me uh, become the YouTube dungeon that I know you can be in the comment section and that's why you pay attention in your slicer so what we have here is an extrusion indicator right so every time this is rotating in this in the direction of that arrow, uh, it should be extruding plastic. When it goes the other way, uh, obviously it, it should be pulling it back out. So during normal operation, I want to point out back here that this stepper motor, which is what drives uh, plastic down through the hose and into the extruder and back up and out, is not functioning. So that means that this stepper motor should have rotated that camshaft with all the roller bearings in it to the point that it's no longer putting pressure on the plastic. So that's one thing to note during normal operation. So while we're waiting for this first layer to get put down and the first tool change to happen. Tool change? <laughs> you can tell I spend too much time around CNC's. Filament change happens. All right. I want to talk a little bit about what what actual sensors are on here. Like, how does it know where everything is? A little bit. It has to be somewhat timing, um, but also there there are some sensors, right? So, you have a sensor here. This detects when this door. So this door, on, is on a hinge, and there's a little lever inside here that blocks an IR sensor. So the lever moves into the IR sensor, blocking uh, the beam when there's filament in here. So it needs to know it. There needs to be a physical bit of filament in there for it to pop open and shove that lever into the IR sensor there. So it knows something's here. Up here, there's a prox sensor up top. So this proximity sensor has a little red light. Uh, on the top here that will be on, that light comes on when there is no filament sensed so if that red lights on there should be no filament inside of that space uh, by the way I am gearing this towards people who have one of these have put it together and understand roughly what's going on here sorry for if you're not one of those people that have one if you are and you want me to go through like a little more in a little more detail let me know so anyway we have an on-off condition here and an on-off condition here. That's pretty much the only sensors on this, right? So this thing gets calibrated at the very beginning of startup, it comes over here, bumps up against it, it knows where it is, it then goes to the appropriate spot. It then only knows, it, it counts steps and moves to any other location. If filament gets in the way and it loses steps, this will be off. I, I'm not sure what you would do at the end of that, 
uh, if there's a way to reset it or not, but I, I'm not aware of it at the moment at any rate. So yeah, sensor here that knows if there's filament there, sensor here that knows if there's filament there. So there is a calibration, right? Like you have to have that prox sensor in far enough to detect when a little ball comes up and gets close enough for it to detect it. So there's calibration there. There's also calibration down here on the IR. All right, so we're getting ready for a, tool, for a tool change. Let's get ready for the tool change. Ah, dang it, not tool change, filament change. Golly, I'll get it one of these days, I swear. All right, so what we should see happen is when it's ready to go to do the tool change, so it should come over here and start filling out that, yep. So that's the wipe tower, interesting. That was interesting. So did you see it just start backing up there? So, yeah, it's literally just, right now it's pulling the filament back out. And now it's pulling it all the way out while trying to pull it forward. Interesting. Okay. We're going to have to sync this up. All right, so right now this is a, this is under the assumption that something is going to be pulled down through here. That is feeding down through here. That'll pop open right there. The IR sensor caught that. It then stopped feeding up here and it took the tension off. Oh, oh, why is it coming back out? That's weird. What happened? Okay, so right now it's feeding the tube down through here. That should pop open. Interesting, so it had a failure to load there for a moment. I wonder why. All right, so at this point, the cam has disengaged, that is no longer feeding, and everything is being pulled all the way through there from there. So that has to be super tight. Um, we're now extruding the silver out and filling it up with black is what we should be doing. All right, so if at any time during the print, you can click, go down to support, and then all the way down on sensor info. Let's talk about states. So one means that that filament is in contact. Zero means there's no filament in contact, which is what it should, right? Because right now, the plate sensor is close enough to the plate that it's sensing it, so it's a one. There's filament up in the multi-material unit, so that's a one. And then the IR sensor has a one as well. So what I think most people will be dealing with is one of three failure modes. That is a failure of this IR sensor to be calibrated properly or to detect properly. A failure of this uh, proximity sensor or filament sensor up top here to be calibrated properly or to, uh, to, to detect properly. And then the third one is whether or not uh, your filament gets snagged somewhere down in here, right? Most of my issues have been this filament sensor here. So to show you what happens when that sensor is not uh, functioning properly, let's uh, pause for a moment. What I'm going to do is adjust the sensor. So this is going to be our first hang up and that is that this is not calibrated properly. So we're gonna loosen the two bolts, which I have these things tightened down super tight because this is the one that's always been giving me problems. All right. So if you slide that housing this way, then it takes less movement of uh, this assembly here as it pivots. Um, to detect. So if I shift it back this way, like 
so, and then we'll retighten it. Now you can see there's less of an indent there. Hopefully, I haven't bumped the carriage too much and we haven't lost any steps. We'll go ahead and resume print. So, IR sensor is reading zero, just the filament sensor is still reading one, IR is reading zero. That means this does not detect that there are film, there's filament in there. But because that one is detecting that there's filament in there, I'll bet she'll run. But we'll see. Go back to the main screen. Info screen. Okay. And she's back to running. No worries. Like nothing happened. All is well with the world. Yeah. Got a little bit of an artifact there. So what, with this not being calibrated correctly and no longer reading the filament, what do we expect to see happen? Go ahead and think about that for a moment. So when we do the unload operation, this is just going to unload. I don't think they're looking for that sensor to drop out, nor to stay in the, the one state while it's actually doing what it's doing, right? It's relying on this to be, because if you were to run out of filament, this sensor would trip out first to zero before this one would. So they don't really, they, I think they're only looking at this when they go and they load fresh filament into here to let this know to stop feeding and to let this know, okay, slow down the intake rate, we're ready to go. But what, was that, what would happen if that read zero all the time? So this would continue to try to feed filament this would think, oh, I, I don't have filament in here, and it's just going to push at the max rate that filament into the heating core, and it's just going to start, like a big glob's going to form there. That happened a bunch to me. So we're almost at that point now. Okay, and here we go. Let her rip. see both. You can see that indicator and that indicator. Alright, so that just unloaded. You, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the filament going back into here. All, hey, everything's good, right? We're golden here. It's going to go over to the next filament. It's going to line up and it's going to start feeding it in. You can see we're feeding now. Boom, here we go. Coming down and in and no register hasn't registered yet uh oh uh oh we're, we're skipping because it's trying to force it it's trying to force it oh gosh oh this is terrible this is terrible it's just feeding that thing in there uh, yeah. there goes my bond tech gears oh god pause print okay and if you see that right there that is that IR sensor right there and it's right now tr still trying to feed in despite the fact that it's paused stop all right here 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 see there's your filament there's your filament stop ruining yourself dick all right we're gonna go ahead and put this back cuz uh, yeah so this IR sensor pivotable to this working correctly. I have to shove it all the way over to the to the right for this to work. Alright, so poorly calibrated sensor leaves this duty right here. So really, really important. I had to shift this whole assembly far enough, like as far over as it'll go before it would work for me. I don't know if this was bent, uh, this lever arm here or what what's going on but like the way I calibrated it the way it said in the book and it it just did not work it was inconsistent um, IR sensor readings it would sometimes flicker one to zero one to zero especially with soft flexible filaments because they will not push the bond tech gears uh, as far apart and therefore that lever doesn't move as far yeah let's get that off No, can I get this off? I need to get that off without destroying anything. Come 
on you. Big mutinous glob. Waste of space. Don't make me scrap this whole print just because of this. Yeah. Free. Okay. So, given that this is now pulling away from the bed, I doubt this is going to be able to be a successful print. So, if we think we've cleared the problem, middle button gets hit pressed pressed it's pressed it should be at this point ready to go so we hit the right button and it should try to complete the operation down here it says we're heating that's all right we're ready to get back in the business now the only thing that could potentially get in our way is if the gears up here have eaten away the part of the filament uh, that it that it, like as it's trying to drive the filament down this tube, um, that could be an issue. So we'll see. Thing is complicated. Once you get it going, though, it's pretty simple. I guess there's what three or four error states. But the problem is, is that when you have one of those error states, it often causes a a secondary issue and potentially a tertiary issue, right? So in this instance, we had it over extrude. We had it over extrude down onto here, so now that is trying to come away from the bed, which may cause adhesion issues in the future. But also, up at the MMU2S, as it tries to feed that down in there, it may get to a spot on the filament that's been dug out because it was trying to push it through previously. Um, and you may run into issues that way. But let's see if we can keep going and we'll we'll try to do the next Alright, so she's functioning again. No worries. We cleared the problem. Let's move on and start our next torture test. This is the silver filament that we're going to be switching to in a moment. I'm just going to put a clamp on it like so, so to simulate uh, you know, kind of like a blockage or in some way, shape, or form an issue. So what's going to try, what's going to happen is it's going to try to pull this through. We should end up uh, pinching it at that point, and the Bontech gear is going to try to pull it free of the clamp. I don't, I think the clamp's going to have enough force, but we'll see. I think it'll work. All right, here we go. So the black is being pulled back out, you can see. Yep, there it goes, it's being pulled out. <laughs> and now the silver should be pulled in, but it should hit the clamp and it should then have problems. And here we go. All right, I think we did it. Uh-oh. What or oh, what will it do? So let's see. It's it stopped it. Let's see what the sensors say. Okay, so it made it into the find a sensor, so it knows that it's partially through the tube. It knows it's partially through the tube, but it knows that the IR sensor isn't seeing it. And so, let's see what it does to try to rectify the situation. Cuz I imagine they have something built into this, like a timer to keep it from trying to keep feeding it out. So let's see what it does. So far, nothing. All, nothing all that much. Let's take a look at the feeder up here. So yeah, you can see it's trying to feed it. It's going slowly on the assumption that uh, if there's a slight blockage, perhaps if it goes just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, uh, it might be able to clear it. It's some kind of routine that Prusa has. I've seen this. Our clamp is still staying strong. Yeah. So right now it's trying to feed. Nothing doing. 
Let's see. Not working. Has it given up? It gave up! Hey, look at that. Gave up, huh? And now what? You're trying to back out. I've got an MMU load failed. I have a blinking light. Das blinking lights in. Okay. So, you see that. What do you do? Well, you're gonna. Tr you know, there was a failure during the load, so I would go, okay, where's the. Alright, there's no filament in here. There's an issue. Check your lines. Make sure that you're okay. Yeah, everything's fine. There's plenty of slack. Uh, in the cord, we remove the clamp or the interference issue. We hit the middle button. All right, all should be well. You know, we've confirmed there's filament in the track. We've looked down in there. Okay, there's filament there. Everything should be fine. So let's hit the middle button. Hold it down for a second. There it goes. It's trying to do its thing. All right, we got a green and a red, so let's hold down this right button for a second. Should be ready to go. Now, the question is, that divot that got put in there as the Bontech gear tried to, to pull it through and ended up just tearing in to the filament, is that going to be enough to keep it from loading all the way? The uh, reason I'm doing this is I want to, I want to show an unload error and what it will do because I haven't tried that yet, but I am kind of curious to see what uh, what that might look like. Most of the unload error errors I've seen is because there's a little bit of something up here that gets blocked and has issues. All right, so it should try to fill. This should poof, start plopping out, and I'll guide it into here. Ah, see? See what just happened? Everything looked hunky-dory. We had filament in there. All was well. We were, we were coasting on sunshine and eggs. Um, so what happened is, is there's a, that dead spot. So if we pull on this just a little bit, it'll start feeding out. See? But here, I'll show you what it is that we were looking at. So that right there is our culprit. Do you see that? Right up against there. See that divot right there that got taken out of it? That caused kind of like a spot where it can no longer drive. So I'm going to force this in here just so we can get going. There it goes. Now it's feeding. Let's see if that causes an issue feeding into the extruder. It may, it may not because this has uh, two gears as opposed to the one up there. The only other thing is I'm going to have to pull that freaking out of there like a champ. All right, get out of there. Holy cow, that's got a lot of pulling force. I mean, this takes uh, not an inconsequential effort. My goodness. No wonder I had to tighten that spring up. Ugh. Jeez Louise. All right. We're cooking with get. Oh god! <laughs> Look, it's starting to, it's starting to peel up. Well, this is going to be a bust. That is going to be a bust. Does anybody have any ideas how to get that to stick back down uh, in this situation if you do catch it? I wonder if I can just put like a little bit of glue stick. Does that melt it? No. Okay. Okay. I just put a little hot glue in there. A little dab, a little dab of hot glue, maybe. Let's try. It's not like I got anything better to do. So you can see the issue here. Our uh, our sweat, our white plate is delaminating. So I'm gonna put a little hot glue like that and push down. Make it as flat as I can. Go on this side, underneath if I can. Push down.
So what it's doing now is shaping the tip of the head that's important so that it can come back through the system and into here without catching. So this is kind of like a, a head shaping cooling movements. And you can see now it's, it's free and our head has a nice little tip on it, kind of like a cone. And it's pulling it all the way back through. And it's going nice and slow at the end. After that sense, after this sensor detects that the filament's no longer there, it stops, moves to the next position. It's then going to extrude the black filament out. I'm gonna go wicked fast, so I gotta be quick. And that goes right, whoop, oopsies. Goes right in there. There we go. Feeds in. Oh, this had an issue too. This is all beat to crap. So all in all, I really do like the MMU uh, 2S. I mean, it is wasteful on these smaller things. Uh, this wipe tower costs about as much to make as this particular print I'm going for, um, which isn't awesome. But so, uh, but you know, being able to print in multiple colors and with water soluble filament is pretty freaking spectacular, right? Um, it's fairly reliable if you can get that sensor and that sensor dialed in and if you can work out your feed system to avoid having it to a, so that it avoid hmm, what's the word I'm looking for if if it requires too much force for the MMU to pull it out because it got snagged on something you're gonna have an issue like with this clamp right the MMU 2 doesn't have a whole lot of pulling force because it's only there you got a smooth bearing on one side and the bond tech gear on the other all right I think we're gonna put this back in right real quick we're gonna put this uh, tube back in after this is done so this entire length here of filament has to go somewhere and that is what that is for back there it's that entire length has to get spooled up into there without getting caught on anything else. Oops. Well, that's not good. So, ah, do you see what just happened there? That snapped. All right, I got to pull that out if I can. Oh, oh, cancel. Pause. Oh, good lord. All right, so here's what you gotta do now. So what I'm doing now is pulling the filament out so that it thinks it ran out of filament. Is what's gonna, it's gonna think happened. Because I just pulled the filament out of the top. Remove old filament and press the knob to start loading new filament. I wanna talk about what just happened. So let's, um, Let's get this thing printing again. You can follow along and I'll, uh, I'll show you what happened. So do you see that right there? This is the part that broke off and stayed in the extruder. See that divot? It's the same divot that we saw on the silver when we uh, pinched it off down here and that gear up in the MMU2S kept going and dug away a little furrow. Is the extruder down here um, got caught like a, it would start like spinning its wheels, nothing, and it, it, it couldn't eject it. Uh, so I started pulling on it, and then it snapped, and then blah 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 blah. But this could just as easily uh, cause an issue with it feeding into it the next time as it tries to feed in. If it gets caught in that little spot, it's like a, a car spinning its wheels in the sand. It does nobody any good. So when I hate I hate to say this, but filament being what it is if you're in this and you're having issues uh, you get one bad issue because that IR sensor wasn't adjusted properly or you know whatever um, because it got tangled back here but up here there's a there you know you may not see it right away because part you know the, the whole length of this got fed back up into there and if it didn't you know as it's feeding up 
it you know it may have gotten through this way but as it's coming back up it may catch that that spot and it may have no traction and you nothing nothing could happen it could just stay there and then you'll get your fault um, so yeah pull that out maybe inspect that line uh, and cut it you know pull two three feet out cut it uh, that way you don't have to deal with it at all that's or you just be aware of it and watch it for about two runs because it took three layers for that black one to show up to manifest itself as a problem and if I wasn't watching this I wouldn't know necessarily what the first cause was but I do now now I've with all this set with all that said it should be set up and it should be good to go and I should be able to just let this run and it'll do its thing Show up and ask the cause of the problem. And I was watching this thing, no necessarily, but the first cause was. But now, no, I'm the only set of the cause of the problem. And I was watching this thing, no necessarily, but the first cause was. But now, no, I'm the only set of the cause of the problem. And I